Hi, I'm Tom Selby. I'm a conservation biology student at the University of the West of England and I'm volunteering here as a guide slash naturalist at the BioBlitz. I've been taking a group of um, some of the other guides and volunteers out uh, with a sweep net trying to see what we can uh, find in the vegetation around. Um, basically you find a nice piece of vegetation it's going to have a lot of invertebrates in it which doesn't have too many brambles because you want to avoid getting a tear in your net that's going to let things through and damage it completely irreparably. So this stand of ferns is looking pretty good so I'm going to give it a go now. Okay, so I've got a lot of fern which isn't exactly what I was looking for. So this is a banded snail, and named because it's got the stripes around its shell. But the interesting thing about this species is the, the thickness and the number of stripes and the color of the stripes varies a lot. It's an adaptation to do with uh, regulating their temperature. And the darker snails will live in more shaded areas which don't get so much sunlight exposure and the lighter snails will live in more sunny exposed areas and it's believed that it's, uh, this variation is an adaptation for temperature control. Wow, that's cool. Got a really nice is a sawfly larva. This is how to distinguish it from a, a butterfly or moth caterpillar and it's to do with the number of different types of limbs it has. So it has two different sorts of limbs. At the front, it has claw-like limbs, and at the back, it has the kind of squishy, telescopic sucker limbs. And in a sawfly larvae, it will always have a minimum of six front limbs, uh, which this does. The other distinguishing feature of a sawfly larvae is that its eyes are very prominent little black dots on its head. Uh, so that's another way that you can tell the difference between that and a butterfly caterpillar.